time. My name is Agata Ulanowska. I'm textile energy and archaeologist from the University of Warsaw, Faculty of Archaeology. And uh, today we are going to present our second video about textiles and textile production in Bronze Age Greece. We will talk today about spinning. This video is made for the educational project uh, titled Artifacts, Creativity, Technology and Skills um, from Bronze Age to the uh, Classical Prehistory in Greece, which is funded by the 4EU Plus Alliance and Erasmus Plus program. Today I'm assisted by a student of our faculty, Alexandra Franczek, who is going to um, demonstrate uh, her skills in uh, textile production. And Alexandra has successfully accomplished one of our courses um, for enhance on approach to textile technology. Hi, Alexandra. Hi. Are you ready to share your skills with us? Sure, I'm ready. Let's start. Before we will start our demonstration of spinning, uh, let us say a few words about uh, spindles. A uh, spindle is a very simple tool. It um, is made of a spindle rod or spindle shaft and a spindle wheel. And by rotating the spindle, the yarn uh, is produced by twisting fibers together. Spindle wheels might have very different geometric forms. They could be tiny, they could be bigger and heavier, and they could have been um, cylindrical, more discoidal, conical, hemispherical. And what is also interesting, as you can see here, there is use work which appears on those tools. And these are different cracks and flecks which are resulting from dropping the spindle while spinning. The examples you see here are copies of um, uh, archaeologically attested spindle wheels and they are coming from uh, Bronze Age Greece, from the sites of Lerna in the mainland, Myrtos on Crete, uh, early Bronze Age and from late Bronze Age, Tirens. Spinning is considered a very kinesthetic activity. It requires some manual dexterity and uh, some body knowledge and good coordination of movements. Spinning was taught at a very early age, as early as four or five years old, and has been practiced through entire life. It is also believed that once someone has learned how to spin, any change to the technique was very difficult. So um, all registered changes in spinning techniques like proved by archaeological evidence, like the change from spinning flax to wool, must have been true challenges for the craftspeople in the past. With practice, spinning becomes a very uh, relaxing and pleasant, even meditative activity. Alexandra, how would you describe your experience of spinning? I would say that uh, it's weird at the beginning. Uh, it wasn't something I was used to. So it was a little bit difficult for me, but with some time and practice, I would say it is a very pleasant uh, and meditative uh, activity, but I'm not the biggest fan of it, uh, if I had to be honest. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry to invite you to demonstrate spinning, but nevertheless, <laughs> we will try. And tell me please, uh, what was the first fiber you spun? Was it flax or wool? And can you compare your feelings about uh, spinning these two raw materials? I would say the first uh, fiber I spun was flax. And I definitely uh, like it more um, because it, uh, I don't need to focus so much as it with wool. Okay, so we'll see how you're <laughs> doing with both fibers. Yeah. Alexandra is presenting you the technique of draft spinning with drop spindle. If you can see, she is drawing wool with two hands and by rotating the spindle, the wool fibers are twisted into the yarn. This technique was most likely developed for short fibers, such as wool, 
and um, it's the most popular technique at the moment in present since most of the um, hobby spinners are spinning in a similar manner nowadays. According to the recent research on excavated textiles from Europe, the Mediterranean, the Near East, as well as previous research on Egyptian textiles, the oldest technique for making yarns from plant fibers, such as flax, was splicing. Draft spinning, demonstrated by Alexandra, has been adopted for spinning flax only after this technique was already well established for wool. As you can see, Alexandra spins without a distaff. Distaff is a tool which holds fibers in order and facilitates drawing them while spinning. With long fibers, such as flax, the lack of distaff may be a problem. Yet the long length of fibers facilitates work. And Alexandra does not have to twist the fibers very tightly and the yarn is still quite strong. Sometimes single span yarns were strong enough to be used as weft or warp for the textiles. But often um, single span yarns were plied. That means that they were twisted together. And uh, what is important about plying and spinning is the twist direction. These two threads are set twisted and you can see that if we remove tension, they are going to uh, twist in the opposite direction in as sort of naturally. It's less visible in flux because flux has less twist, but it's again the same mechanism that if we're going to ply Z spanions, it would be the opposite direction. We end this video by showing you how the yarns spun today by Alexandra look under Dynolite digital microscope.